there. So, uh, as some of you know, I've been in a very uh, throw-centric mood of late, and uh, this has been a particular type that's caught my eye. Now, I've, I've had this in my repertoire for a few months now. I occasionally do it in, um, uh, in performances, but not all that often. Um, but uh, in trying to ambidexterize myself, that is, get it down with both hands, uh, it's opened up a lot of stuff that I've seen in other videos or uh, other poise spinners that I really respect, and uh, I thought it would make a good uh, topic for a tech blog. Uh, first and foremost, the toss that we're talking about, uh, I, I've heard both Eric and Ted refer to this as a sneaky toss. Uh, I can't remember who I first heard use that terminology, but um, essentially the idea is when you're performing a weave and you're, you're basically going through a hip reel, or uh, excuse me, a waist wrap, um, there's this moment when you're reaching on the reverse side, underneath your arm in order to weave over to the other side of your body. Now, um, you can escape from that point with a toss if you so chose. And most of the time when I see people do tosses out of this, they're doing a toss wherein the poi does a little loop above the head, and you want it to kind of revolve around until the uh, tether is pointed straight down when you catch it on the other side. And in that way, it barely interrupts the movement you started with, and if you're really slick about it, you can do a number of throws and the audience barely knows what's going on. They think it's cool though. Now this is a different type of throw. This has more in common with float throws. Uh, the idea being here that you want to keep the uh, motion of the poi constant instead of trying to make it go around in any number of circles, right? Um, this involves keeping the handle essentially as close to the wrist of the other hand as possible. And in so doing, it should be waiting just on the other side of the wrist for the throwing hand once it gets there, yeah? And I mean, you can do this forever in a day if you've really got the motion down. But interesting things start happening when you get it down with the other hand. Namely, uh, a couple possibilities open up. This is one that you may have seen in a couple of Poi Boys videos. The idea being that you do that weave, but you think of the beads of the weave on each side as being opportunities to make that sneaky toss. So, say, if you were doing this with glow or fire, it might just look like a normal weave. A little wonky, but otherwise not bad. Whereas, when you have the benefit of a little bit of daylight working with you, you can clearly see that the performer is doing a whole bunch of tosses to make that work. Um, the other possibility is one that G actually showed me when he was in town in DC uh, just a few days ago. And I think I'm doing this slightly different than the way he did it. Um, but he can, uh, if he's watching, comment in and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Essentially the idea here is to treat the end of that sneaky toss as a stall and then switch back the other way. And it creates this lovely little moment on either side where there's a poi facing up and there's a poi facing down, which is the same kind of position that we use for our, uh, our stall chasers or uh, these kind of rast axle style stall switches, yeah? But either way, uh, it's got a nifty kind of back-to-back -back pendulum feel to it. And, of course, it transitions very cleanly back into this move. Yeah? So, fun uses for sneaky tosses. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you have a great week. Peace.